Good morning and welcome. It's a Tuesday morning, uh, what a number of us will call the most productive day of the week. <laughs> a number, you and, call it uh, that, mostly on the show. We <laughs> just go along with you. <laughs> it's Tuesday. You, you, uh, you're on this side now, you want to get to this side now. You no, know, it is fine, it's fine. I'm, I'm always on that train myself, to be honest. Mondays, <laughs> yeah, Tuesdays remain a second opportunity mm. to get your week started properly. Uh, even if yeah. we didn't go as Definitely, yeah. definitely. That's the <laughs> idea, kicking off the whole week and ensuring that uh, everything goes well. Well, today we, we might have some surprise when it comes to the kitchen mm. because uh, yesterday it didn't plan for something. Yeah. But well, it I didn't just happen. I had plans. I you had plans. Were, but it's not yeah. every time life goes according to how we plan no. it to go. It's about lemons and lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, speaking Pepe of has lemonade, come down now and Pepe her skin all of that. is bright and beautiful. Her smile is even brighter. Yeah, just a smile is okay for us. Yeah. Just a smile. Just a smile. <laughs> She's going to okay. light up our kitchen today. Just a smile. <laughs> well, well, that's talking about if you will get to see her later. Ooh, yeah, that's it. That's, hey. all, that's a smile. All right. My name is Mike Mesikeno. <laughs> and I'm Tita Laya Oin. So remember, you can use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC across all our social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show on Nigerian TV. Mm, our app is available for you to watch us anywhere via the Google Play Store and the Apple iOS Store around the world. All you need is just some internet connection. Indeed. UHF Channel 49. Go TV channel 16, Star Times channel 121, all places you can watch us. And uh, yeah, as long as you're following us, we'll be giving you updates on Facebook, X, Threads, Instagram, TikTok. You do not want to miss a thing if you check out uh, TVC Entertainment underscore. All right, it's a Tuesday, and for our lineup on Tuesday as it is, we definitely have uh, some good stuff for you. We have Bumio Kesola, who is a social development practitioner who, of course, uh, is into, you know, when it comes to child protection and sexuality education. That's parenting for today. And our topic for uh, this morning is going to be quite an interesting one. Well, we're talking about uh, abusers, uh, how abusers groom their victims and families so that you can mm. put out a red flag or red notice mm. whenever you see any of these uh, things we'll be pointing out. <sighs> yeah, that song is featuring Friend of Wake Up Nigeria. Wrote to me. Who's friend? Friend. He's a friend of the show. Yeah. 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 Friend. It, amazing performing artist. I uh, was in the show, the series Power. Did you watch Power or, or, or Empire? Which one was it you watched? Which one? Why are you looking at me? What? The child started. No. What? Why? Nah. I did watch both, actually. You watched both? Yeah. But I didn't finish any. Oh, wow. Just saying. Talking about watching. <laughs> talking about watching you. Yeah, I just started uh, Wheel of Time yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. And have you seen it? No. Mm. So I I've, I've, I've had it for a very, season. I've had it for a very long time in mm. my watch list. Mm. Very, very long time. But while I was talking with somebody, I was just like, look, look, just start it, just start mm. it, just because there's, you know, there's so much to watch. Layers. There's, so, mm. there's much. so much, yes. If you want to talk about what I need, what everyone knows, what, but it's yeah. about which one, you know. So I was like, okay, let's just start it. And you know, there's something he said. He said, look, from the beginning, mm -hmm. it's not a slow build. It's from not the beginning, a, yeah. it is boo, boo, boo. And what? <laughs> Legit. Legit, yes. like from the beginning, what I was like, the first I was like, ah, ah, it's okay <laughs> now, yeah, and then okay. the, so yeah, they so kept hitting. So, the, the challenge is when it started, it came out at the time that uh, Game of Thrones was wrapping up, okay? Yeah, yeah, uh, true, true, because and, um, it's yeah, just two seasons started, old, and, and it, it just felt like there was too much competition for the airtime, but now, yeah. Now I think people are cooling off. They're still co they're, yeah. the competition is mad. Uh, no, it is. We I have think. two, three major streaming yeah. uh, platforms, uh, platforms yeah. and you know and they everybody's are dropping trying content to content back mm -hmm. to yes. back. Yes. You know, have local yeah. content that you can easily get to access True. on these yeah. platforms. Yeah. There is money available, and which yeah. is where I go to the fact, fact that money is not the number one problem. Mm. Yes, because as much as money is available... Locally now? Yes, speaking. locally, yes, okay. locally, locally. We, we still see a lot, there's still that thing that a lot of it is just like, hey, come on, now there's money, why are you putting up this kind yeah. of thing? You should be cleaning up because, you see, paying attention to detail, like you say, yeah. it's the small things that really matter, especially when the money, when the money is there, it's not the big things, it's yeah. the small things. The little, little things. things. Little things. Of course, especially in production. Exactly, exactly. But, uh, yeah, there's another one I'll recommend to you, Mr. Mm. and Mrs. Smith. With Donald Glover in it, you need to. Should I say what? Out. Should I say? No. Yeah. Don't say it. Don't say it. Let me please tell me to say it. No. Let me do that. Please tell me to say it. Say it. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Ah, no. Oh. It's not. Oh. It's not. Oh. It's deep. <laughs> You're not deep enough. You're not deep oh. enough. Wow. wow. You're not deep enough to understand. That's not the, that's the excuse but they use. at this point, before oh. Mike rings on my party, oh. let's see what the weather's going What? Good morning. The news on Wake Up My Dear, I am Mike Messikeno. The West African Examinations Council, WIAC, has released results for its 2024 Senior Secondary Certificate Examination for School Candidates. The 2024 WASC was held for a period of seven weeks and six days, spanning April 30th to June 24. Out of a total number of candidates that sat the exam in Nigeria, uh, which is uh, 1,685,889, 93.39% uh, have all their papers processed and released, while 119,327 candidates representing 6.61% have some subjects still being processed. Amos Josiah Adangut, head of WIAC Nigeria, said the results of 215,267 candidates representing 11.92% of the total are being withheld in connection with various uh, reported cases of examination malpractice. Cases of examination malpractice as schools, supervisors, teachers, and candidates perpetrating this evil are not helping the educational system. All hands must therefore be on deck to san sanitize the system. As was for school candidates, 2024 results are being uploaded on the results website. Candidates should, after checking the result online, apply for their digital certificate, which will be released 48 hours thereafter. Candidates who have fulfilled their financial obligations to the council can assess their results on the council's results website, www.wayekdirect.org. The last may not have been heard on the viral video female of a female traveler seen destroying an Andrian standard passport at the Moritala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. This is as the Nigerian Immigration Service say they have launched a formal investigation following the circulation of a video on social media. The statement signed by the service public relations officer stated that the woman has been identified and invited for further investigation. According to the statement, if the allegations are substantiated, her actions would have been constituted a breach of Section 10B of the Immigration Act 2015 as amended with corresponding penalties outlined under Section 10H of the same Act. The Nigerian Immigration Service remains steadfast in its commitments to upholding the provisions of the Immigration Act in the interest of national security and to preserving the dignity and integrity of the nation's legal instruments. Ukraine's top commander has said Kiev's forces control 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory as they begin to press their biggest cross-border incursion in two and a half years of full-scale war. Commander Alexander Asirsky said uh, Ukraine continued to conduct an offensive operation in the Kursk region seven days after it began. Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, said Russia had brought war to others and now it was coming back to Russia. But Russian leader Vladimir Putin described the offensive as a major provocation and ordered Russian forces to kick the enemy out of her territory. A great number of people have been evacuated from the western Russian region for their safety, with a further 59,000 told to leave. The local governor said some 28 villages in the area had fallen to Ukrainian forces, that 12 civilians had been killed and that the situation remains difficult. Ukrainian troops launched their surprise attack last Tuesday, advancing up to 18 miles into Russia territory. All eyes on me when yeah. I enter the party. Wow. wow. <laughs> uh, Interesting that you should... But you know, is uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Wow. So they sing and they dance and the people, they rejoice, yeah. My brother, ah. my sister, no be today. Wow. If you're good, if you're bad, they make you the tango, the yeah. yeah. Papa got now your hand work, yeah. Yeah. And do uh, karaoke now, you so will run. One of the many songs that yeah. B Square have made popular over the years. And I dare say, in fact, going by some records, 
as at that time, probably Africa's, one of Africa's biggest acts yeah. ever, you know. Brands. And it's, yeah, it's just been going, the whole story has been going back and forth. Some of you are tired, some are not tired and all that. But just some recent revelations mm -hmm. by Peter of P-Square, yeah. which he revealed in two open letters yesterday, mm -hmm. have rocked social media. In fact, Twitter yeah. is all buzzing, people with different opinions and different yeah. stuff and all of that. But apparently, uh, the, major, the, the major thing here is about, um, hmm. how, what's, what's the word I use now? Can, what's the word I use now? Can, uh, should I say stealing or what? I don't hmm. know. But then he has, a, he, hmm. he has accused his brother who, according to him, Which has one of the brothers accepted is? as Jude, the elder okay. brother, okay. of siphoning their money and a lot of it, millions of dollars and hundreds of millions of naira yeah. from their, their royalties or as it were their catalog yeah. into another company run by Jude and his wife and all of that with, in connivance with Paul. You know, and it's, because it's Paul, Paul had come out, Paul yeah. had come, come out to, to mention that his yeah. brother took him to EFCC because we saw a video of them earlier on at a table somewhere in some sort of <laughs> office going at each other. And that was how all of this went on. So, you know, that's, that's what social media is all buzzing now. I wanted to just mention the fact that the open letter that came out in the morning yesterday was extremely heartfelt. It was well written, detailed. Um, and there, there are a lot of fans that have had so many questions. Uh, and he hadn't come out to speak before. Whereas, I'm talking about Mr. P now. He hadn't come out to speak before. But uh, his brother Paul, a.k.a. Rude Boy, had done numerous interviews, gone online a few times to say, you know, all sorts of things. One of the key things being, you know, he's written a lot of the songs. He's, the, you know, he's based, essentially the brains behind the music. Um, and of course, Peter has always been known to be the one with the steps, the moves, the dance, of which he also said in that open letter that, you know, ever since they became uh, Mr. P and Rude Boy, they've not sold out to the stadiums like the way they were when they were P-square, you know. Um, and he's, he was so emotional. I actually felt for him when I read that first letter. The details you just gave now is the second part of it where, you know, the EFCC actually came into this whole uh, conversation. But there was something else he said. He said that... Um, based on all the things his brother had said about him, that they weren't going to hate Peter. They were going to hate both of them because they, as a group, as a team, as a brand, had failed the fans. And I actually feel like a lot of fans felt that way for a long time. Like, you guys should just sort out your issues and come out and give us good music. That's what we really want. You yeah, know? they were unable to do that. But the mm. major thing now is how does an elder brother mm. decide to embezzle funds in that way, like do that kind of thing. How do, so that's where social media is all buzzing around. Yeah. Sibling rivalry, as it were. Can you go that deep? Can you <laughs> go that far? How far can you go to swindle your the, sibling, your as it were? Blood. How far can you go? Mm. You know, and that's, that's where social media is all buzzing. And I don't know, it, it's, it's a bit hard to, to take in and all of that. I'll, I'll look at it, but man. Is it really? Okay, yeah. Is it really? So, to, anyways, my retort to that, not retort, anyways, my response, let's say response to that, talking about now mm. sibling and family issues and all of that, I'll honestly say that I'm fond of saying this, right? Now, when I say sometimes people are like, oh, okay, you can be like, I'm like, see, in the end of the day, when you're thinking about certain things, right, you mm. think of the fact that, fine, you have family. I'm not saying some people's family have literally been the best thing that could ever happen to them in their yeah. lives. Yeah. However, some people have actually felt, I mean, had several difficult things and situations from family members, especially from family members. I yeah. keep on saying that family didn't choose you. Yeah. Yeah. Either did you choose family, yeah. right? It was given to you. Yeah. You just came and realized that, okay, this one is... We're told. Exactly. Oh, do, do you understand? <laughs> the family that really matters, the way I see it, is the family you actually choose, choose. Yeah. based on yeah. the, the way like people re yeah. relate with you and relate with them and all of that. Yeah. So to be honest, I'm not totally surprised that, um, I mean, this could actually happen from like family, like blood and all of that. Talking about twin, because someone literally said, oh, money and um, 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 women can literally separate even twins. And I'm like, it's not about the twinness of it all. In the end of the day, it's about the person and who the person actually is. Do you understand? And I'm like, literally, um, and that's why I think I would drag it to the situation where people are trying to set up business and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. who is my, my family member? Yeah, yeah, come and sit on the board. Come on, yeah. family business. That, I, for me, I think that is the reddest flag 
hmm. of, of, of all it all. Time, Do you yeah. understand? Yes. I mean, I understand that in the generations have passed. I mean, you watch different movies mm. and I'm you see lit, 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 Italian, the, Asian the, the, movies. The Italian about concept what? of family. About family. Yeah. Being and you there. see how the plot seems to even kill from father to child to yeah. second born. So it is literally, and, and as much as you want to say, okay, fine, this is family. You guys meant to do this together. People, the heart of man is desperately wicked, whether you're family or not. When is a situation where someone needs to get ahead, they will do whatever it takes, to be honest. And we need to also understand that even with family, the rivalry be begins from from small, yeah, from yeah, a situation of, oh, there's a first child, yeah, and oh, right. you this one realize that, okay, second child now comes, oh, yeah, the right. attention has drifted, there's corner eye. So there's a whole lot of things that's happening even yeah, from right. that time. So, so, so ah, but my issue, a, my issue now, on, man. my and there's issue also, is... Sorry, just to mention this, and there's also a situation where, I mean, you see twin brothers mm. who are not twins, first of all, they are not fine, they are not talented, mm. you're not there as the elder brother. Mm. They're mm. not looking, they're not singing, they're dancing. Everybody, uh, no, you manage. I don't see how well, it doesn't. Do you so, understand? Are you so my, so. my issue, my, <laughs> my issue I'm with all saying. of this is a lot of, see how there were a lot in. of fingers being pointed at the women in their lives before mm. now. Um, and I, I wanted to say this that I, fe I feel like it's been quite unfair on social media to the wives. The wives of the twins have gotten so many blows and hits on this matter. And I'm just so pleased that, you know, with this information we're getting, I, I'm, I'm just such a big fan of, of Lola, of Anita. As the, inf as the information, information coming from Mr. Peace's side, at least, um, is what we have now, right here. Um, well, and it shows that... Uh, look, look. It shows look, that has, there's um, a lot more Paul to the story spoken, than before. Paul has spoken before. Mm -hmm. And when Paul spoke, he did not mention receipts. Mm. We know that there's an EFCC case. Mm -hmm. It was established. Yeah. And Paul, Peter has come out and stated that, look, they are received that anybody, nobody can prove he never took Paul mm. to EFCC. Okay. Now, this is for confirm. It's easy. Any, yeah. comp any, any, any company that is incorporated in Nigeria, you can yeah. check it out. Yeah. I have checked it out. Yes, there is a north side music. And there yeah. is also a north side And it is, as, it is as Peter said, yeah. it is registered with directors, Jude and the wife. Yes. Hmm. And so, the, you you so, can yeah. see everything. So, now, hard. so now this it's is also hard. something yeah. I actually want to speak about. I mean, hard. There was once upon a time, right? Yeah. There were, we had a lot of product, producer and artist um, clashes, yeah. right, yeah. in the entertainment space. I will call on one that was quite popular, the Kiss Daniel, when he mm -hmm. changed his name from Kiss yeah. to Kiss, mm -hmm. right? A lot of yeah. people were like, oh, why will you actually leave that name and everything? But it's something he had to do mm -hmm. at that point. And I love the fact that he did it immediately. The, issues started. Yeah. And that's literally something you actually work out. And I know a lot of people have been wondering, okay, fine, why this place? Why can't you be said to? So obviously, these are things that have been going on into, yeah. like, uh, in the background and obviously what caused their distance. But I'm saying these are grown men. This is how many years after their career has suffered. When Why was have this been issue not family, addressed family, family earlier? You're trying to cover your brother, up what? Your how no, for years your royalties are going no, to the said, brother and his wife? He said he just discovered this. That's just discovered it. That's what Peter says. How is it that you're releasing music, putting it on a streaming platform, you know royalties are coming no, and you're just... No, no, he, he said, look, the brother was this. managing it. Yes. That's what I'm and that's why he said that they gave him, and he had, yeah. he was managing that's them. That's what I'm saying, no and matter and what, then, and due then, see, diligence That's is, how, that's how fraud happens. They were yeah. siphoning. It wasn't, it came into, it came, it was, this was royalties due to yeah. not side How entertainment. How would they tell you they no, say they will ask you, so, say no royalties? Is it not what? How? When, go, when <laughs> people, when people in government, when, when ministries, when you hear that, uh, better, you do and all the rest. Uh, is that how they used to do it? Uh, your songs are Until streaming daily. You are as popular as you are. My point is that you as an artist, you, you also need to do your due diligence you know and what? contracts to, and all of that. That's it where it comes from now. any issue. We have to wrap with it up. artist or anything. We have to wrap it up. The law. OK, <laughs> but, but there's still a lot of information we need, we know we're yet to hear on this matter. And uh, well, honestly, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. This issue of siblings, we'll love to hear your thoughts. Use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and let us know. Let's take a quick break, guys. All right then, guys. Wow, OK, Tuesday, mm. another tasty Tuesday coming your way right here on Wake Up Nigeria. No, she won't make. Uh, she won't make. Uh, well, Mike needs this information as much as you at home do. Yeah. And myself and Winnie are in the kitchen today because we've all been talking about how Winfrey's skin glows so bright. You know, she's always looking so slim and slender. Like, oh. what is it that Winfrey actually eats? What is it that she <laughs> drinks? What is it that she's doing to make herself 
look this good yeah. every single day. Mm -hmm. So what are the healthier options we can we can choose? Let me just point it out that I'm at gunpoint right now. Really? Doing this at really? gunpoint. You're not doing this at gunpoint? The person that is holding the gun is at where? Really? Yes, he knows Seriously? himself. Yes. But I, but <laughs> he we, knows himself. <laughs> I did really call him, but he knows himself. Yes, of course. In this, and of really? course, to be very honest, it's actually my pleasure to actually be here, mm -hmm. sharing you guys one of my many recipes. Mm -hmm. So let me just say this. Once upon a time, I literally had ran a business that literally sold salads and smoothies. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'll say that smoothies are my go to. Okay. Also, smoothies literally helped me get through the pandemic. So during the pandemic, I literally had a thing I do, social distancing with Winfrey, right? So I yeah. recorded and I put it on YouTube and all that. And yeah. if you go there, you see all manner of smoothie recipes. Because as I spoke about what was happening around, yeah. I also blended um, a lot of like smoothie. Fruits, vegetables? That was a time that bl bl the sound of a blender was literally like, uh, wow. in fact, it was like white sound to me. Just <laughs> like therapy. Soothed me. I'm telling you, like therapy. <laughs> so today we're literally making, you didn't ask, ask me. Oh, okay, okay. So... <clears throat> Winnie, what are we making today? <laughs> so today we are literally making um, a simple, but I'll say the most, the most balanced breakfast you can literally have, Ooh. right? And it's something as simple as an, a banana oat smoothie. A banana right? and oat smoothie. Yes. Great. So yeah, so the amazing thing about this recipe as well is that you can either make it as a smoothie mm -hmm. if you're like me and you love to drink liquids in the morning because of course you guys might have my giant tea mug here mm -hmm. and I mean I Very love intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm done with that, the next thing I like to go in with is smoothie because smoothies literally get digested faster mm -hmm. and a smoothie is a great way to literally get all your vitamins and fibers and proteins and carbs and all of that into one literally cup yeah. and um, as opposed to eating all of that and everything so we're making a simple um smoothie. banana so i think we should smoothie. tell them the ingredients we've already mentioned mm -hmm. oat and banana right yes. but there's a lot of other things here. yes yes so what's oh, okay. this what's so, this this is the one that's um so that's chia seeds yeah. and flax seeds chia seeds and flax seeds. yes so okay. chia seeds now they're high super high in antioxidants right okay. and they are also fatty acids healthy hearts mm. fatty omega-3 um, acids, right? For both of them, right? Now, flax specifically literally has a whole... You know damask, the fabric yeah, damask, definitely. is made from flax. Mm. I know, know why. You know, ah. damask is very expensive. <laughs> exactly. So this is... So this is like... Probably a this bit is pricey. Just, this is... This, oh, yes, flax is it's pricey. Mm. And it's, it's really, really pretentious. It's really... It's high in antioxidants. Mm. It's anti-inflammatory. Mm. It has a whole lot. And of course, if you're a woman, it also yeah. helps regulate um, estrogen. Ooh. And uh, of course, if you're thinking of people that you can use it to prevent um, breast cancer, anything that has to do like with them, okay. um, female um, hormones and things like that. Okay. So you have flaxseed for that. And of course, chia seeds that we all know um, as well, also very good, mm. um, high in fatty acids. Um, so, so and all of that. I know that this is going to be like just a, like a garnish, but it's one of the biggest. It's going in. It's going in. Right in. Yes, Seriously? of course. Yes, of course. Okay. So right. that's the amazing thing so what's about. This? So that's cinnamon, yeah. right? Cinnamon. cinnamon powder. I a lot of people know, yeah. Digestion, right? It aids digestion. Yeah. It helps regulate your menstrual um, circle and wow. periods. It's a good aphrodisiac. Ooh, yes, really? of course, yes. I wish I knew that. Right? <laughs> okay. And it's really good. Um, it's antibacterial. It's antifungal. It's um, it, it's really good for the woman reprodu um, reproductive um, organ as well. It's also good um, for for males as well. So don't think it's only. Um, the woman's stuff, right? Yeah. And it's good for acne as well. If you have so people. cinnamon, yes. So whether topical or oral, yes. So now, of course, we have the almighty cashew nuts yes. and granuts, yes. which is more easy to find out there. Yes, of course. Um, and this is milk, now, right? Yeah, that's milk. That's coconut powder. Coconut powder. Yes, which we're going to be making into a milk. Okay, vanilla essence. We have vanilla essence. Um, that's Greek yogurt. Ooh. Yeah. The and oats. that's oats, of course, and, and that's dates. the almighty dates. Dates, yeah. Of course, the bananas are here. We're going to be putting together this lovely... Mm. Banana and oat smoothie <laughs> a la Winfrey Aguileche. Yeah, a la Winfrey Aguileche. We're going to be okay. making this very soon. If you have some of these ingredients at home, why not join us as yes, we course. go on this journey? Yeah. Stay with us, guys. Mm. <laughs>
uh, in children. Now, there are some statistics that, um, some alarming statistics that talk about how um, it's more close family members uh, or people in your immediate environment um, that are most trusted that you need to really pay attention to, especially when it comes to your children. Uh, now, no one is pointing fingers at your family members, but the truth is paying extra attention to the interactions between your children and your family members is extremely key at this point. Uh, we have uh, Bumi back with us this morning, Bumi Okishala. Um, and it is a delicate topic to begin discussing at any point in time, but it is one that has to happen. Definitely. Um, now, we've come from the parents' angle uh, last week, who they need to you know, look out for. But now you've decided that today we should talk about who the predators, how the predators sort of look out for their prey. Um, so I, I'm not sure how you want to begin this conversation. There must be a story behind this, uh, how you want to begin. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Titi, and it's so good to be back. Um, so I felt we should go in this way because I realized that there is a system predators or perpetrators, as we'll call them, mm. used to groom children or prepare children for abuse. And I believe that when parents are aware of this information, they know the signs to look out for. In people, it makes it easier to be able to prevent abuse, okay. you know. Um, and this system is a whole, it's a, a full-blown system that predators usually use. They are patient enough to look for their victims. They are patient enough to go through the process of preparing the child such that when it comes to the point of abuse, the child doesn't notice and they don't groom the child alone. They also groom the family as well, or people who are connected to the child such that there is no suspicions, yeah. they are not easily identified. And they do it in such a subtle way that if we are not aware, it's so easy to miss it. Okay. And um, I've worked with children a lot of times, and you see that the system, the process is similar again and again. I went through some form of abuse as a child. And looking back today, I can seek practically all the boxes mm. and see how this process went on. So that's why I believe that mm. It's really important, especially in times like this. Can you give a hypothetical scenario of a particular child and the family situation he or she were in when abuse eventually occurred? Okay, so um, one thing, you know, one thing I must highlight here is that abusers can be anybody. I know I said that last week. And usually, according to statistics, it says 90 percent are people who are close to the family. So you find, you find them in the home, you find them as caregivers, you find them as that loving uncle who is always, you know, picking on a particular child, treating a child in a special way. And most of the times you see them isolating the child. Okay. You know, they pick on a particular vulnerability of that okay. child and they begin to prey on that vulnerability and making the child see them as special. So you can see in a family, maybe there is one of the children who is sickly or maybe one that doesn't do well so much, or there is this quiet one within the family. Or there is this one that is just, um, an uncle comes and he picks on this one as, oh, my favorite girl. And you keep hearing those kind of um, flatteries, those kind of expression to this particular child. child. Okay. In those situations, that is where, I'm not saying you suspect everybody, right? I'm not saying that you become paranoid. But I'm just saying that there are specific signs you can look out for. And I would really want us to zero into those specific signs okay. and how you can identify them in your child. Okay. I think one of the major parts we didn't talk about last week was the part of knowing your child. Mm. Because one thing that helps you know when your child is being abused or something is going wrong is that you have established that communication with your child, that safe space where your child can connect with you and communicate with you at every point yeah. for you to know what's going on. So as children get older, their uh, methods and modes of communication with their parents evolves. It doesn't exactly change, but it does change, but it, it grows or reduces depending on the personality of the child. We've talked about uh, so many different aspects of this on the parenting segment over the years. Um, so how do parents begin to identify when a situation is completely outside the box. So, for instance, you have a child going from infancy to toddler to, you know, young child, then to young, uh, to, yeah. to tween, teen, teenager, yeah. teenager, then eventually adulthood. Yeah. 
So between the twin ages, you know, where communication is supposed to be strongest between parents, what should they look out for? Okay, so at that point, um, especially between the twin and the teen age, because mind you, relationships is built over time, right? Yeah. And so you want to keep that communication line open such that at that point, you are basically, it's not the point where you're the disciplinarian, where you're shouting at the child. You are connecting with the child such that your child sees you as a safe space. I know one of the reasons why it was difficult for me to open up when I was going through this abuse was the fact that I didn't have that safe space okay. with my parents. Okay. I didn't, we didn't have certain discussions. So certain discussions felt like a taboo, especially when it comes to um, sex education. So it was difficult for me to tell my parents that, oh, I was experiencing puberty, you know. So those are the kind of conversations. You start having those conversations from when they're really young, and then you can build on it as they grow, such that if anything happens, you're answering your child's question. Mm. So no question is stupid. Mm. Do you understand? I believe that's where it starts from, that you can connect enough. I was talking with a parent, and she was telling me how a child was able to open up to her when an abuse started. Because okay. she had created that safe space. They had had series of conversation okay. on sex education. They have had series of conversation about puberty, who the abusers are. Yeah. And it was just easy for the child to come say that, Mommy, that thing you told me about, yeah. this person is doing, this person is touching me in a way I don't like. So there is that worry that uh, uh, some adults have that um, if they introduce certain things to a child's mind or... Uh, even the child's vocabulary, that the child would use them haphazardly and eventually, you know, get people in trouble uh, for no reason whatsoever. Now, there have been situations where children are upset or angry at a particular adult or a particular person, or they just don't like a particular person um, and just decide to get that person in trouble. There has been a worry of some parents. Yeah. Now, we're not trying to say that these children are lying. We're just trying to say that sometimes kids overexpand on, or, or maybe stretch the truth. Let's put it that way. Okay. You know, um, what exactly do you believe is the best option for any parent at that point? Okay, so the what, one thing I want to say is that know your child. Okay. Such that you know what your child can do and what your child cannot do. And to a large extent, you want to put yourself in a position where you believe your child. Mm. And that starts from a place of building trust and relationship over time. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, like you said, I know that uh, people think most of the time children exaggerate. Yeah. But there is a particular age where that stops. Okay. And there is a particular period where you begin to see that mm, this is going overboard because you really know your child. Okay. Now, if you don't believe your child, I've had a series of situations where children completely go off their family because there was a situation where they were not believed okay. by their parents. So to a large extent, we were saying child protection, that believe the child. Hmm. Believe the child and investigate while you are investigating. You don't want to put a child in a situation where the child doesn't open up or the child closes up completely about um, real issues that you really want to know about. Okay. Because these are some of the things that the perpetrators prey on. The fact that they create a situation where it is hard to believe your own child. Mm. They build trust so much. They connect with the family or people who are related with the child so much that it's hard. They make it yeah. difficult for you to believe that yeah. they can actually prey on your child. I have, I've actually heard of um, a particular situation. Um, I'm going to have to wrap up with this one, though, um, where a particular girl had told her mother about her mother's boyfriend mm. who was apparently abusing her and the mother didn't believe her. And every time the man was in the building, in the house with her, she had to find somewhere to hide. Um, now, obviously, there's never enough time to talk about these things, but we'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this particular matter. Thank you so much for joining us uh, once again. Please use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and tag us WakeUpNigeriaTVCE on Instagram with your thoughts. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, quite an interesting personality we have in the house. Of course. <laughs> Don't crucifix you. <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that well. Yes, you probably do the pronunciations. But we're talking mm -hmm. about uh, Tumininu Oluyole, uh, who is a successful show businessman and entrepreneur 
who officially launched his brand in August 2020. Uh, he's a businessman, he's an artist, he's a general entertainer, all of that. It is great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys having me here on your show today. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see, business, music, which one came first? Uh, music before business. Mm. How, did it, how did it all start for you? Tell well, us the story. Which one, the business or music? The music. Music. Go ahead, Excuse go ahead, me. tell okay. us. Well, yeah. I grew up, I'm from a musical family, actually. Mm. Um, uh, growing up as a kid, going to church, obviously, mm. you know, church choir, and then going to local community events mm -hmm. back then. And then uh, my older brother, the oldest in the family, mm. uh, Sean Dante, is musical, is in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Oldest sister as well, she's a gospel singer. Mm -hmm. uh, she, you, Leo, Leo of Dreamcatchers, you guys might probably have heard that before, my younger sister. Mm. She's so, oh. I mean, it's a family thing, it just comes, oh, amazing. Wonderful, Beautiful. wonderful, <sighs> that's a great one. All right, so, but now let's talk about, let's just talk about this project. We had Root Me, it's up to two years now we've had him on this no, show. No, I don't think but it's two, last yeah, year. Yeah, last year, that was just last year we had Root Me on this show. Mm -hmm. But this really, this is good music and all of us. Talk to us about putting this collab together with Root Me. Um, again, uh, I think that's what, something that shows the growth that I've had in the last four mm. years coming back uh, into the musical industry. But uh, I actually specifically wrote this uh, I Believe song. Mm -hmm. It's one of the songs in my EP, four uh, tracks EP. Mm -hmm. uh, tailored to him because of his musical mm. prowess as well. Yeah. Most people say, wrote to me, oh, power, Dre, right? But they forget that this guy can sing. Yeah. And so um, I kind of noticed that, okay, well, me and him can actually mesh together. Now, that was a gamble in the beginning. Yeah. And when I wrote it, you know, delivered it to him, less than one day response from him, damn, the collaboration, you know, and the mesh was just so easy. And so, like, this is one of the easiest collaborations I've ever had. And mm, again, I think uh, the video and the music, you know, speaks for itself. Oh, amazing. Definitely does speak for itself. I mean, considering the fact that you speak about how, I mean, I mean, show business is not, is, not a, is not a play thing for you, right? It's something that you're used to. And that actually stands out in the fact that you say you wrote this music tailored to him, right? I mean, you want a collaboration with an artist. You write a song that literally speaks to his type of music exactly. and all of that. Doesn't, however, doesn't that bother you that your sound might be caught up in all of that? And then, first of all, what is your sound? Uh, well, good question. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was why I, get, I wasn't too concerned about kind of like writing a song to him. Mm. Okay. Um, I call myself an Afrofusionist. Mm. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, uh, my song is kind of, you know, Afrobeat. Okay. You know, learning from Fela Kuti, then going a little bit of, you know, reggae with uh, Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get into contemporary music when you see Usher and Drake. And so I kind of put them together. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I just want to create a beat and a sound that would resonate with my fans and kind of like still pushes out my message. Okay. I like that. Amazing. I like that. And uh, you said it was a four track EP. It's already out there. Yes. It's already out there. Correct. All right. Now let's talk about your business part. You yes. also mentioned that this is something that you've been doing from mm -hmm. all, from all, uh, you know, from since you were young and all of that. How did you forge your, your business muscles and all of that? And so, you know, I think I'd had an interview last week and we were like, wow, how did, what's your story? Almost similar to this. I was like, well, I would call it from grace to grass and from the grace to grace, yes, right? Like, I was fortunate to go to a good school. Mm. You know, my parents suffered and did all of that and then everything, boom, you know, that's a real Nigerian story. So my dad, my mom, you know, always already in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I was telling you earlier, I started making, I mixed drinks up when I was 10 years old. You did? Mm. So and, and then take you to school <laughs> okay. and then sell it. Obviously, wow. that got me a lot of trouble <laughs> mm. back then. And so I think that was what I always remembered then that really, well, I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. Like, I'm all, you can do anything what you want. Sure you get. Yes, yes. So when I did that, then, you know, gradually, you know, went to school as an accountant, mm. master's and all of that. I actually quit a big job mm. to venture on my own. Okay. Failed woefully, shall we? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I think <laughs> that's the experience. Yes. 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 Failed woefully, but that, I think that was the uh, resiliency that I really love about it that doesn't make me Scared of anything, right? Leave I'm my never scared. Mind. I'm thinking about the kid, <laughs> mm -hmm. the ten year old kid. Mixing drinks and selling drinks. Mixing drinks. I'm the parents. You know, yeah. back then, yeah. our parents are there from now. Mm -hmm. If my child should do that, or when you, we are going to put him <laughs> in entrepreneurship. But then I know how much yeah. your parents could even think you're you are joining bad gang. Yeah, yes, yes, actually. Yes, you know, yes. but, but, that, but that has definitely helped Paid you in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in your music business, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, because uh, uh, then, you know, I took an hiatus, I would say, in the music business, you know, remember the uh, the grass period, you can't, yeah. you know, talking about being an artist and mm. entertainer, it's just so 
hard for you to really, even like you like said, our parents wouldn't even support it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to really show them something. So right. then I went through the business route. Okay. And then uh, created uh, Don Crucifix Entertainment when I decided mm. to come out. So I'm also mm. the CEO of the label. We have okay. a lot of artists in it. And so okay. uh, I decided to kind of, you know what? Let me just come back into what I'm good at. Yeah. Being an, like and an all around entertainer. Okay. So, so the business for, part of it for you was literally a route into the industry. We were out back into the back industry. Back into but the yeah, industry. Back. So tell us, what has, what, what, has that, what has that journey really been like for you now? The business part of things and now stepping back in as an artist. As an artist. Mm -hmm. yeah. While you're running that business. Yeah. You know, I think that's what makes me who I am today. So it's shy kid. You know, growing up, doesn't, have, doesn't know what to do, went to Unipot, mm -hmm. couldn't even finish school, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden started having business, mm -hmm. then failed. And then, so all those experiences mm -hmm. made me who I am. Even I'm still learning, but made me who I am today. And who am I? Mm -hmm. I am fearless, mm -hmm. <laughs> very creative person. Mm -hmm. And I don't take no for an answer. Okay. And at the same time, I do not go for less. All right. And so if you have this mentality, mm -hmm. okay, I think that's why it made it a lot easier. So, okay, okay, I have taken care of that. Now I'm coming to this. I'm not going to give you something that you hear every day. Mm -hmm. If you go listen to all of my songs, you would actually see the growth. This okay. is the third EP. And so you see the growth. So that's, again, me. I have yes. to be creative. And then you also see that I put a, a lot of hard work into everything that I do. Yes. And when I say that, Six to seven months for each track sometimes. Six to I, seven months for each I have Nigerian to, movies, they don't stay that long. <laughs> no, I have to make sure that <laughs> the cooking. details are there <laughs> and all of that. So, like yeah. so I think that's what made me who I am who today. today. Yeah, it's Just uh, for your fans out there moving forward, what, what can we look forward to? Mm. What are the upcoming projects that you're doing? Yeah. What can people who love what you do after mm. seeing that video, what can they look forward to? Mm. Yeah, okay, before I forget, so the name of the EP is called Believe in Forever. Believe you know, in four tracks, yeah. Okay. Summertime, I Believe, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Roti Me. Then I have uh, No Competition and uh, Forever. Uh, so I am also a movie producer. Oh, good. Uh, well, John Crucifix Entertainment, mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, it's an entertainment it's, industry. So okay. we, we don't develop talent, mm -hmm. uh, we distribute, we, so we actually have a couple of movies that should mm -hmm. be coming out. Uh, hopefully before the end of the year, we just shot one. Uh, this year, it's called Mending. Mm. Uh, we have uh, Nancy Simenate, I got along with me that there, Demola Didoi, Eyina. So, obviously, like Who's I told you, I don't put out mediocre stuff. Yes. Look out for it. If you guys think it's not one of the best movies, <laughs> I take you up on that when you see it. Where can we see it? In the cinemas or streaming? Uh, well, we're working with, uh, it's almost out. For, I would, you know, you guys would see it out there. Okay. But uh, the goal first is to have, uh, uh, what's it called, a private screening. Okay. In okay. December, okay. and then put it out to it out one of the you know big streaming big. platform out there. Oh, Obviously, wonderful. either Netflix or Prime Video, wonderful. whichever one. So, wonderful. and then we have another one called Transit mm. that's okay. also out there. So, mm. uh, talking about those are the things you would see. Yeah, uh, I already have a movie out there called Privileged. It's on Prime Video. You can see that on Prime Video or Google Ooh. Play. And okay. so then you I have acting a, it or you produced it. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Don't I look like a good actor? Yeah, of oh, course. You do. That's what I'm saying. That's why I even have to ask. Okay. Um, you, don't, you do quite a lot then. Let's watch out for it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then so again, then I have some collaboration in music, obviously okay. coming out there. So yeah, those are the few things that mm -hmm. you know that. You know, it's in the health and really have a lot going Amazing, on. amazing. You've definitely well taken the business in the entertainment. I'm telling and you. Held I'm, it with strong hands. I'm amazing. telling you, I'm telling you. Well done. And this is all of us here wishing you the best yes, in all absolutely. of these projects, you know, because Thank it's not you easy very to much. put all of this together. Yes, I know how absolutely. music alone can be challenging. That is yeah. true. Movies alone <laughs> challenging. That is very yeah. true. Papa, you know, I decided to put everything together. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the real MVP. Yeah. So, uh, well done, and uh, mm -hmm. this is us wishing you the best. Mm -hmm. Thank you well very done. much. So, I, I don't know, you made mention about mixing drinks, yeah? We, we, <laughs> you, saw us, you saw us putting some together. We have to be very healthy. any drink, please, no. <laughs> There's a different type of mixing. Maybe we should be specific. Maybe we should be specific. Thank like, you. Food, food stuff with nothing like alcohol in it. Exactly. Thank you for bringing that up because that can be. So, no, no I mean, yeah. we're talking, talking about spending six to eight months on a song or mm -hmm. on an EP. Now, how long has it taken for the movie to come together? Okay. Transit was shot three years ago. Okay. If okay. I am off two years, three, two years, something like that. So you okay. can see how challenging that can be. Yeah. We just shot uh, Mending this January again. Okay. It's, it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to bring 
something out. But I work with a uh, shout out to Robert Peters. You guys mm -hmm. probably might have heard that name yeah. before. Yes. Uh, he's a mentor of mine as mm. well as well as my director, and we and I into business together as well. Okay. But one thing I think he also taught me in my career is that sometimes patience is great. Mm -hmm. Actually, I lied. It is. All it the is. time. Is. All Patience the time. is great. Every time, yeah. And then at the end of the day, quality and data. So that's why I said you would never see me put something out there yeah. just because of the cloud and mm -hmm. stuff. It's for the details. And so, Amazing. yes, it might take a while, but yes. it's because we have to make sure that. Of course, everything absolutely. Is I think that's what exactly. we even need in the Nigerian movie space. Like, yeah. we need people paying attention to that detail. Different so details. it's time for, um, for you to try out um, our, mix our mix in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's a vibe. Yeah, it is a vibe. <laughs> well done, well done. Big still. Uh, yes. Sir. And of course, uh, we had the Lord, the chef. Yes, sir. Put this together. together. Ah, it was something <laughs> else, man. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'd like for you to steam. try out our banana oat smoothie. Yeah. The straw is there, but in case it's tough, you okay. can yeah, use, you the can spoon use the spoon to and taste just it. scoop it out. Okay, well. So, we just have oats, meal, um, oats in there, bananas, chia seeds, flax seeds, vanilla, cinnamon, uh, coconut. coconut milk, coconut milk, and uh, yeah, yeah, just healthy stuff, basically. Okay. So, yes. have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think? We have dates in think? there as well. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. So that's I'm very, uh, that, all the ingredients sounds healthy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, being somebody that like, you know, we've talked about it already, yeah. always on the go. Yeah. Um, I can sit down for a really nice meal or whatever, and I yeah. usually drink, I think, this. Now, no, like, kidding. No cap. Well, <laughs> no cap. No cap in here. Yeah. This really tastes good. Good. Wow. No, no. Really good, and I'm not capping. Okay. Really <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And it has a lot of bananas for all the energy you need to produce everything you need to produce. Yes, so. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! The um, Lord is Chef. Yes, so. It was the really Lord is Chef. Oh. But hey, come on, spin a great show. Thank yeah, you. It has. Sure, we will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>